Hello, welcome to Fort Bragg in North Carolina for the big power drop almost live. We heard, were hoping to bring you live coverage, but the drop was pushed back a couple of times. But uh, we are going to try and bring you the very best of the action as 2,100 personnel from 16 Air Assault Brigade, the UK based, Colchester based uh, group of paratroopers, very heavily involving, of course, three para there and 82nd Airborne. This is their show, and they'll soon be jumping uh, out of the night into the drop zone here. We're going to have to douse our light because we don't want them frankly thinking that that's a landing light and landing on top of us but we do have through the power and the magic of television a green night scope so at least it should give us a pretty good sense of what it's like the first sign lights on the horizon and then the parachute exits from the rear of the c-17 in this tranche we're dropping equipment Artillery pieces, mortars, even vehicles will be coming out of these aircraft. And as you can see, they're using multiple parachutes to account for the vast weight of the item at the bottom. You can see slowly falling down to earth. A number of C-17s and a single C-130 are part of this first parachute drop, the first tranche that we're seeing going across. And to the left of the screen, the first has made a touchdown and further items are falling a little further back. This is an absolutely key part of the mission to capture this airfield, getting the big kit items in there first and then following up a few minutes later, the paratroopers. They'll be doing, incidentally, their final checks and we're getting a fantastic view here of a large item of kit. It's very difficult to identify on this green screen, but that definitely is a vehicle. It's touched down now. I, I think that's a Humvee vehicle that has come down there, made a, a heavy but a very safe landing on the drop zone at this aerodrome. It's parachutes now just falling down to earth. Yes, that would have been a Humvee. It's using four chutes. And just look at that picture now. The sky absolutely full of parachutes all carrying kit and it you know is fairly reasonable to assume that the larger the kit the more parachutes are needed so these ones we're seeing now uh, containing smaller items mortar pieces artillery and the like again difficult to identify uh, through this green screen but I can tell you we are getting a much better view of this than the hundreds of spectators who are assembled here uh, for them it is pretty, pretty much pitch black but we can see those parachutes coming down touching down safely and they have small lights on them to help the uh, parachutists once they've landed identify them that's a foretaste really of what we're going to see in a little while impressive in itself i've certainly never seen anything as, as you know large scale as that in terms of kit and equipment coming across so that's what that has been the kit the equipment getting onto the ground and of course if you're coming into an enemy zone you're not going to want to leave that kit around for too long on the ground so very shortly we should see the big drop begin. 2,100 paratroops coming in to this drop zone. And here they are, the first paratroopers leaping from their aeroplanes. They've been in their chalks training for an awfully long time now. They're using the rearward doors, both doors at the same time. We can hear gunfire there to simulate the enemy firing on these paratroops as they come into land. Just look at that picture. Absolutely hundreds of them. The sky is filled with parachutes and still the aeroplanes come. Chalk after chalk entering the fray, leaving their C-17s and C-130s. As we move across, you can just see all of those parachutes. In total, 2,100, and everywhere you look, the sky is filled with them. More planes coming across. This will mean more parachutes, and there they are, coming out at regular intervals. The loadmasters on board, or dispatchers really, I should call them in this case, doing their job absolutely perfectly, getting those men where they need to be. They are, of course, 16 Air Assault Brigade, the Colchester-based 16 Air Assault Brigade, jumping alongside, shoulder to shoulder, with their American counterparts from 82nd Airborne. Look at those Bergens swinging below them. 
as they now come into land. Oh, that's a great picture. Look, they're not too far away from those vehicles that were dropped just a few moments ago. The canopy falling to the ground. And now it's a very quick time. Get that canopy stowed away, get on with it. But let's zoom out again and see the picture in the sky. And yes, it's a fairly empty sky. No, it's not. Look at that. Still more parachutists coming down. I mean, it's, it's incredibly difficult to get a, a real sense of the sheer scale of this in these dark nighttime conditions, but I think these green lit pictures that we're seeing do give the best option we can. Yet another plane coming across the skyline. That chalk jumping out. The lights twinkling, their parachutes beginning to open, falling down to the earth. They're, full, they're jumping from 800 feet. The plane drifts away into the night sky and look how evenly spaced they are, and that is very important because each of these guys wants, you know, their own bit of airspace, their own portion into which they can fall. This jump was delayed a couple of times. The weather was the reason for that, we understand, particularly the wind speed. But now that wind has dropped, and so they can safely, or more safely, uh, begin this operation. You'll see a, a drogue shoot. I'm not sure whether we can see it in this light, but a drogue is released and that pulls the big parachute out. And yet they still come. Really doesn't take long for them to fall that 800 feet down to the ground. And there they are. That's the darker portion of the airfield. It's quite hard to pick them out, but you can see the men on the ground there. This is the culmination of the JOAX exercise which has been going on since the 3rd of March. British personnel from 16 Air Assault Brigade working with their American colleagues. And it's the fruition of lots of joint working, a, a huge opportunity to develop bonds and and really cement the relationship Britain has with America. That gunfire still ringing out. Of course, we've been focusing on the parachute drop, which is hugely important, but that's only stage one. That's getting them into theatre, as it were. Now is stage two, consolidating the ground. So they'll get those chutes wrapped up as quickly as they possibly can and go and deal with these targets. We're zooming in now on one of the you know, enemy positions. You can see the gun outlined clearly. They've been firing off volleys, another uh, volley from another gun position firing off there. And the, and the paratroopers will be doing their very best to get to these positions and deal with that enemy. You can see very clearly in this picture the slits in the corners of the parachute, as it were. These are American parachutes. They're slightly harder to control, I understand, than the British parachute, but they do fall at a slightly slower rate. Oh, there you saw the Bergen being released. That's a, a core role that... Uh, that paratrooper has to do during the descent. Get that Bergen away from his body so it hits the ground first and with any luck can't damage him. You don't want that attached to you as you fall. That's one of the key skills they've been practicing and yes they're coming to the ground now, disappearing into the gloom a little but he's down and the chute follows after him and immediately He's beginning the job there of gathering up that chute, getting it squared away, getting on with the mission. You can see one of his colleagues there, a lamp on him, aiding him in that purpose. This gives you a sense of the scale of the task ahead of them. We can see the ground, but it is pitch black out there. They, they will find it really hard to orientate themselves and don't underestimate the, the sheer bravery needed to jump out of a plane in the night, but then to, to get on with this and they'll be out there for many, many hours. They'll be embarking on a, a NEO operation, it's called NEO, which is to rescue some non-combatant civilians. But that's a long time in the future. They've still got to consolidate this ground, deal with the enemy, get their kit squared away and get on with it. It's only the start, but it has been a spectacular drop, albeit a bit delayed and a bit in the dark. So that was it. 
2,100 personnel jumping, the biggest exercise of its kind involving British and American personnel for more than a decade. It's been truly humbling watching the two groups of airborne troops interacting with each other, developing strong bonds that they hope to use for the future in a world's trouble spots as yet unknown perhaps, but they'll be able to rapidly deploy and work together thanks to exercises like JOAX. From me, Tim Cooper in North Carolina, thanks very much indeed for watching.